Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 69 of Direwolf20's Let's Play. Woot! Getting close to 70. Another world download will be soon. Uh, today, I'd like to, like I said last episode, upgrade maybe my extractor. As you can see, it's taking care of some sticky resin and some rubber at the moment, as well as my compressor uh, to use the advanced machine versions. Um, as you might recall, the uh, compressor has an upgrade that's called the Singularity Compressor, which is nice and cool with obsidian all around it. And then the uh, extractor is a little bit more complicated. The centrifuge extractor requires some electrolyzed water cells. Uh, those guys are not quite so easy to get, but we'll figure something out, don't worry. Uh, so for now, I might need to grab an electrolyzer to deal with this, but uh, I'll at least get the compressor going. Uh, the extractor, we'll see if I decide I want to do that or not. So uh, let me get the resources together, and then I need to get real quick back to the uh, mob grinder age, because I would like to finish up the mob spawner that I was doing, hopefully by the end of this episode, definitely by the end of episode 70, so that you guys can play with it a bit uh, for the episode 70 download. Alright, I'll be back once I have the resources. Alright guys, make sure not to take your transformer upgrade out of your machines while they're still hooked up to power. Otherwise you might have the problem I just had, which is my uh, extractor blew up. Whoops. Oh well, I'll live. Uh, crafting logistics pipe's gonna go back in here. I need to get this thing put back together, uh, as well as the stone transport pipe for now. And I'm gonna just get my compressor going. And then since I uh, you know, went ahead and blew the thing up anyway, I might as well make an advanced extractor. Um, so let's get our compressor with, uh, I had some obsidian, where'd it go? I don't know what I did with it. There we go. Hooray! Singularity Compressor. Nice little device. Uh, just going to place him right there. And uh, just like the other machines, we're going to want to apply a redstone signal to make sure that he, uh, you know, stays running. Uh, it works just like the other ones, even though it's an add-on. Uh, but let's do that. So right here, activate. And you can see the pressure's building. So I'll let that pressure build up. And then I might as well just real quick um, request one of those uh, little tools to... This guy, the mixed metal ingot, request one of those because I need to reteach my crafting pipe this little recipe. So I'll be back in a few once I, uh, you know, get everything working again. There we go. All right, so what I'm making here is called the electrolyzer. I hope I've got this right. I might have to swap these two items. Uh, I was close. Pretty sure I was right. Uh, electrolyzer, where are you at? Somewhere around here. No, oh, that's the pump. Ah, oh, there we go. I need some more copper cabling. Whoops, I was close. Really close, actually. I think my copper cabling went down that way. Better keep one in here, make sure it knows where to go when it has extras. I did teach my system how to make copper cabling, by the way. There we go. Now I've got an electrolyzer. Cool. The electrolyzer basically takes water cells and stores electricity in them. So I'm going to request out of here, let's say 11 water cells. Why not? Uh, they're going to just basically boost the output of this thing. I should probably pick up my uh, generator here as well. Thank you, Mr. Generator. I'm going to place the electrolyzer next to my MFE, which is basically the way this machine has to function. The electrolyzer needs to sit next to a, uh, a, a, a energy storage unit, and basically what happens is any excess power within the MFE, when it gets to about a full level, it's going to immediately start bleeding the energy out into the water cells that you place in the electrolyzer. So I just picked up 11 water cells. Uh, you place it in there, and it'll start getting the energy. But it only pulls energy out of the MFE when the thing's pretty full. And remember, my MFE is connected to my lava generation system down there, so this thing's going to take a while, but it'll slowly produce electrolyzed water cells. I'm going to need seven of them for the advanced extractor. So uh, I'll just wait a little bit on that process, but eventually we'll get there. Um, it does take a bit. Now, uh, when the MFE gets low, by the way, if it, gets, if it runs out of power, it'll start draining energy out of the electrolyzed water cells, and they'll come back over to here. So your electrolyzer is basically like uh, uh, an expansion of your... MFE. It gives you more storage of energy. Pretty neat. But for the time being, because I don't want to wait uh, for the electrolyzed water cells before proceeding, I'm going to sneak over here and knock this thing off for a moment. Didn't mean to knock you off, sorry. Stone transport pipe. 
probably got my whole logistics system all freaking out. What just happened? All right. Uh, I'll put down my extractor here again uh, and make sure to put that uh, nifty little transformer upgrade. Might as well put the overclockers as well. Can't hurt, right? And then I can reconnect my glass fiber cable. Remember not to connect your uh, fiber cable like that until you've got your upgrade in there. Cool. So now I can fix my uh, little auto crafting system that I had there. Hey, you were supposed to stick to that. Oh, well, I'll fix it in a minute. And I'll be back in a few when I'm ready. And guys, I'm just teaching my uh, auto crafting system here, the integrated heat disperser, probably the last component I really need to worry about when it comes to crafting this stuff. And I already taught it, the integrated reactor plating and all that other cool stuff. So we should be good to start creating automatically some nuclear reactor components. And most of these, like I said, do not stack, which is why it's really helpful to have this cool little auto crafting system here taking care of most of my troubles. Cool. So, I'm going to start crafting a nuclear reactor. Uh, as you guys recall, the nuclear reactor, as shown here, requires four advanced alloys and two advanced circuits and a generator. What a coincidence, I just picked up a generator. Ha, huh, how cool. And uh, it's also going to need a couple uh, reactor chambers, which is pretty expensive, but don't worry, uh, it'll be all right. So I'm just getting all these items out of here. I'm going to hang on to my drench there. I'm going to need it soon. But the uh, reactor chambers are going to need uh, one of those integrated heat dispersers each and uh, some integrated reactor plating. So I'm going to need four advanced alloy per chamber. So that's a total of eight. And then 12. And then I need uh, two of those uh, heat dispersers. So let's get started with this. Um, integrated reactor plating. 12 and uh, two of the heat dispersers so far so good you know what I don't need 12 of these integrated reactors I only needed six. Oh well too late 12 advanced alloys though don't worry I'll use them in the future I'm sure um, I needed uh, what else two advanced circuits See how nice it is having this autogen stuff? Very nice. Boom, right in there. Cool. And there comes all those cool items. Lots of stuff required for this all to happen. And you can see the Singularity Compressor doing its job as well. Thank you, Singularity Compressor. Got about a dozen of these. All right, so let's get started. And there's my two advanced alloys. I'm going to need a couple machine blocks, which will require uh, 16... So let's handle that real fast. We might have everything we need now. All right, let's give it a try. So first off, going to need some of this stuff. Two advanced machine blocks. Okay, and uh, didn't I request two of those crazy contraption things? Let's see what's going on downstairs. I requested two of those integrated heat dispersers, I thought. Oh, right. Integrated reactor platings and coolant cells do not stack, which is why they're all sitting right here at the moment. Whoops. All right, I can solve that real fast. I probably had this uh, problem back in Season 3, didn't I? And I probably forgot I had it. Oh, well. Come here. Thank you. Better put this away. Okay, so the way to solve this, as you guys may guess, is as follows. I just need a chest to sit right there. And one of those logistic satellite pipe guys. So we'll put this here in a second, but I need a satellite pipe, which is two redstone around a basic logistics. Basic logistics and two redstone. Not in here. Some here, though. All right. So satellite pipe will go here. And let's call this satellite pipe, because we've already established a couple others. This will be number four. It's the next one in the series. OK, uh, we'll put a chest here. And then we'll open this guy up and tell the uh, integrated reactor platings to go here and the coolant cells to go here as well. So I need a few of them. Uh, two coolant cells and one integrated reactor plating. 
So one, two, and one. Cool. So you want to try this integrated heat disperser thing again? Let's try it from down here. Two of these, please. Request. Successful. So stuff's going to flow all over the place. Look at that. Crazy things happening. All kinds of nutty stuff. Iron's getting refined. It's going to get processed and uh, compressed. Advanced circuits are going everywhere. Coolant cells. Oh my. Coolant cell got bounced out. What just happened? Oh, right. Derp. Ha! How about number four, please? All right. Let's try that again, again. Uh, so let's clean up this. I'm going to have a lot of extra of these, but that's all right. They're going to be used pretty darn soon. I was like, why did you do that again? And then I was like, oh, duh, of course you did that again. That's what you were supposed to do, because I didn't set you up right. All right, one more time? Yeah, I think that's probably a good plan. And there's probably a bunch of excess stuff in there, but that's all right, I'll get it out in a bit. Yeah, see? We'll just get the uh, excess out of here, because that's not really necessary. All right, here we go again. Once more integrated reactor platings. And because these things all don't stack, you can tell why it's really nice to have the auto crafting system. All right, items flowing everywhere. It's just fun to watch. Admit it, it's cool. I love the look of logistics pipes once you really get into them. And they should bounce into the chest now, and all the items should go into said chest. Oh yeah, I can't open it because there's a block above it, but that's okay. Should be getting pretty close to crafting me something. Hey, there was one that just came along and did something, I thought. Where'd you go, over here? Nope. Oh, I see, they flew up over here. Okay, that makes sense. Um because that's where I originally requested them from. I bet there's probably a bunch of stuff in here waiting to create more of these, huh? If I put these back, will it create a bunch? Fulfill my requests, perhaps? Hey, what's up, Slimer? Just want to open this chest. Nope, nothing in it. Just checking. Oh, right, I know. Yep, makes sense. All right, I know what's going on. So I'm just going to cover this up again. Hey, get out of there. And uh, just get the excess items out of here, and this chest should be working now. Beautiful. All right, let's craft this thing. So I'm going to need an integrated heat disperser, four advanced alloys, and my integrated reactor plating gets my first reactor chamber. And then the same for the next ones. So uh, more integrated reactor platings with the integrated thingy and the whatchamacallit and the other stuff. And there we go. Awesome. Reactor chamber number two. They do stack, by the way. Uh, then I need a generator, okay, to go in the middle. Two advanced alloys and four of these things. So I did get everything I needed. Um, I had the extras, remember, from the downstairs thingy. So there we go, nuclear reactor. Dun 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 dun. Awesome. Uh, I think I should change the setting on this, by the way, to not leave the last item in the stack. That way, my logistics system can see and access all the items in there. So let's just change that up real quick. Right now, it wouldn't pull out the items that I already crafted, but I do want it to, so we'll make that normal. Cool. All right, let's uh, go place this where we're going to put it, and then we'll craft the items to make it create power for us. So mob grinder. Do I have everything I need before I hop over there? It wouldn't be like me to forget something, would it? Glass fiber cabling. Perfect. Let's pop through. Yoink. So the lights are on in the other room. That's good. So let's figure out where I want to place this nuclear reactor. It's a good question. Where would I like to place it? Hmm. I don't know. Um, I might want a room that leads off of the side here. So maybe something like right through this wall. Um, maybe like right through here. 
and this could be my nuclear reactor chamber. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, let me start building it. Uh, again, seen enough building of rooms that uh, I can probably do this much off camera. Let's grab my mercurial eye and start playing around with marble. What do you think, guys? Not a bad nuclear reactor room? Yeah, I think it looks good. Uh, so anyway, let's get crafting what I want to do here. Uh, now, I'm going to want... Hmm... We want to make sure it's pretty safe, but the reactor I'm going to build shouldn't explode within one cycle. So as long as I'm sure it's nice and cool, I shouldn't have too much to worry about with regards to it exploding. But we should maybe just, uh, for the sake of being extra safe, make sure that we uh, place it in some encased area just to be careful. So what I want to do is get my nuclear reactor and place it right there. Ooh, birdie. And notice that the interface has these uh, little interface here that you can put items into. I'll get into how this all works in a bit. Uh, those of you who have seen the Let's Play series before will recognize it. I'm only going to put about probably one layer of protection around this room. I'm not too concerned about it blowing up. Uh, it should be fine, but uh, you know, we'll see what happens. So um, nuclear reactors can blow up if you don't be really careful with their heat level. Um, come on, uh, catch up. There we go. Uh, let's get out of here. I should have uh, some advanced alloys. Let me request a handful of these. Advanced alloys? Where are you at? Let's get about, I don't know, 24 sound good? Yeah, that should be good. Um, what are they usable in? I want to just double check the recipe because I might not remember it off the top of my head. There is a recipe. So yeah, one. All right, surrounded by stone. All right, I wasn't sure if it was one or four I needed there for reinforced stone. So let's get about eight of them then. That should do. Okay, and uh, next up I'm going to need some reinforced stone, so uh, just a stack of that should do as well. Uh, reinforced stone is this nice material that has some really serious damage resistance. Now you guys should note that industrial craft will um, pretty much change the way damage resistance works on vanilla blocks, specifically obsidian. So uh, in the past a lot of people have commented that I should use obsidian because it won't blow up as easily. Not as true because uh, reinforced stone is uh, the best stuff to use and obsidian, like I said, will be adjusted a little bit by industrial craft. Its explosion resistance is lowered. So reinforced stone is a nice thing to build your nuclear bunkers out of. This might be enough, it might not, we'll see. So uh, not going to have like a big old nuclear reactor or anything, but we should build uh, some protection around it. So I think what I want to do is build out around like this. Okay, that ought to do. Yeah, that looks nice. And uh, don't worry, I'll have a door and all that cool stuff. Nice. Uh, now, if you were going to have uh, nuclear chambers on the side of this thing, you might need to make this room bigger. In fact, you most definitely would. Um, you'd have to put chambers on all six sides. So like one here, one here, one here. Um, maybe not too much larger, actually. But this is good. So I'm going to get the uh, rest of this room built up, and then I'll be back. All right, built my little nuclear bunker here. Now, um, with a nuclear explosion, if this thing were to blow up, uh, with the small size of my reactor, I might be all right with one layer of um, protection here. But if I had a larger nuclear reactor, I'd want more layers um, protecting me from the explosion. Um, as many as three or four would be necessary. So I'd want another layer, and then another one around that, and then another one around that. Eventually, uh, you know, about three or four would be good. But I'm going to clip right through here, and you can see how hard it is just to drill through this stuff with your diamond tip drill. Yeah, serious business, this thing, huh? Totally. And uh, this guy, I'm probably going to wind up putting some stuff on the flooring here as well. You know, again, more protection. But uh, I did create a door, as you guys just saw. So, ta-da! Now, the cool thing about this door is it works like an iron door in that you can't just click on it to open. You definitely need a lever. So, uh, we'll want a lever here. Ta-da! And we're going to need to run our power lines down to that MFE. Now, the nuclear reactor that I've chosen to go with, uh, if I recall correctly, was something around 40 energy units per tick output. No, wait, it's 70 energy units per tick output. 
So that's under the threshold of uh, 125, so I shouldn't have a problem really uh, connecting this directly to my MFE. So let's give it a shot. I should have some cabling on me, wherever that might be. There we go, glass fiber cable, enough. And remember, shift click to uh, place the cabling on a block. So we'll zip this along over here, and uh, again, shift click to get this guy over. And if you hold space and shift at the same time, you won't drop down while flying. So this guy definitely won't explode because the power is not on yet. So that's a big uh, good thing. And I'll do uh, some more reinforced stone on the flooring of this room. Again, probably not necessary. I uh, chose a reactor design that pretty much won't explode. Um, but we should be alright. And if it did explode, I mean, it's just going to go straight down into the void. It's not really going to cause much damage. Um, the sideways explosion might mess with this room a little bit. So if I really wanted to be uh, extra safe, I should probably put a few blocks here to protect my overworld book. You know, just because. That would probably be smart. So uh, I'll be right back. Is that enough? Yeah, that's plenty. I don't even know if I want these here. Alright, I'll be back. All right, so the next component that's important about this nuclear reactor is the way it works with uh, pretty much how it creates electricity is you have to put uranium cells in here, and uranium cells are made with that uranium I have back at my base. And I need to also put some items in here to help cool off the reactor. Your uh, nuclear uh, power from the uranium produces a lot of heat, and this nuclear reactor hull can only handle so much heat before it explodes. But we don't have to worry too much about that because there's some items that we have in industrial craft to help protect us from uh, all that nuclear bad stuff. So let's hop back to the overworld and start getting the items we need to craft and, uh, you know, keep this heat level under control. Uh, luckily, some of those items, or all of those items actually, are ones that we've already uh, figured out how to make. It's these coolant cells. And the other one is that integrated reactor cooling unit that uh, you guys saw a few minutes ago. So what I think I'll do is get the items I need. Uh, I should put them in some kind of bag. I guess the white bag will work here. So uh, let's open this guy up. And I'm going to request one, two, three, four, five of those integrated reactor coolant guys. So where are they at? Five of these guys, integrated, react integrated heat dispersers is what they're called. Um, and the way they work is that they will disperse the heat in a reactor among all the items. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about what that means in just a few minutes. But for now, just note that they're uh, a good thing to help cool off the reactor. Cool. Almost there. And if you really want some in-depth knowledge on how nuclear reactors work, check out my uh, tutorial on it. I do have a uh, tutorial on nuclear reactors on my channel somewhere. If I remember to write it down, I'll put it in the comments of this video. But otherwise, just look around. You'll find it. Can't miss it. So I've got about five of those guys. And if you want some more information on how to, uh, you know, do some nuclear reactor designs, definitely check out the industrial craft forums. A lot of people who are way smarter than me have figured out better ways to do the uh, stuff. And I'm basically copying somebody else's um, design here. Let's see if I can figure out whose it was. All right, funny enough, this design does not have an author, um, according to the uh, forums. Like, it, they just list it as unknown. So uh, I've got the coolant cells I need, and I've got all the other cool stuff. Looking good to me. Uh, I think what I need next, then, is uh, some nuclear cells. Yeah. So let's grab three pieces of uranium ore. And I'm going to need uh, three empty cells. So why don't I just request a few of them? Because I don't have three in the chest there. Uh, three, please. And the way this works is you basically, all you need to do is compress your uranium ore. One, two, three. Get your refined uranium. And then you pick up your cells here and uh, combine them. One, two, three. And they don't stack either. Back to the age. Hooray! Mob grinder world. Alright guys, so uh, basic industrial craft has some cool components for nuclear reactors, and I'm going to get into them in just a minute. However, there is an add-on to industrial craft that I highly recommend. It's called nuclear control. Um, there were some add-ons for like just thermometers and a couple other cool things, but nuclear control seems to have brought a lot of mods together. It's found on the industrial craft forums. I link to it in my forum thread uh, where I list all the mods that I use. And this thing adds a bunch of cool devices like a thermometer, which allows you to uh, take the temperature of a reactor and find out how it's doing. It's crafted as shown. Uh, or you can get a digital thermometer, which is even fancier. 
oh yeah, that's what's up. Um, and then there's some sensors you can put in and even some blocks that it adds. Uh, I went ahead and used just, uh, it only uses one block ID. Um, I was using 4094 for my uh, solar arrays and my compressors were 4095, but uh, this one uses 4093 is what I chose as the next block to use. So uh, you get some alarms you can make and uh, some thermal monitors. We'll play with those a little bit. Like I said, not planning to have this thing blow up on me, but we should be extra safe. So why don't we go craft that digital thermometer back in the overworld. Um, as you saw, the recipe for the digital thermometer wasn't terribly complex. Uh, we just needed some electronic circuit, three refined iron, and a glowstone dust. I can handle that. So electronic circuit, three refined iron, and a glowstone dust. Just get our crafting table ready here. Glowstone dust goes on the bottom. These guys go like that. And then uh, the circuit goes right here. Digital thermometer. Might as well charge it up. And I'll put this energy crystal somewhere useful, like here. Uh, by the way, my electrolyzer finished filling up its electrolyzed water cells, so I'll be able to make that advanced extractor soon enough. Digital thermometer, ready to play. All right, the digital thermometer does a little bit more information for you too, so that's pretty neat. So back to the mob grinder world, let's take the temperature of this device. Oh, zero, as we would expect. It also reminds you what the water evaporation point is, 5,000, and the melting point where it'll start melting other blocks and creating lava is at 8,500. If it gets to around 10,000, you've really had a problem and you're gonna explode pretty soon. So let's figure out how we wanna create this reactor. Um, I do also, not sure how I wanna do this, but I do need to get some kind of, uh, you know, something going on. So give me a sec to think this over. All right, we'll figure out what happens, but uh, I might need to break through this wall because basically what happens, we want our nuclear reactor to be able to get a redstone signal. So let's pop through here real quick and uh, figure out exactly how I want to handle that. It is going to mean me not having one block of water, but eh, we'll be all right. So get this back in place. We'll see what happens. If it's a problem, we'll find out pretty quick. Uh, so I need out of my orange bag, some of you. Oh, I have two red alloy wires, that's it? Are you kidding me? I'm gonna need more of that. And uh, some more uh, jacketed wire as well. So maybe I'll come back in a few seconds once I'm ready and have all the components I need. All right, let's see how well we can run this stuff. Uh, I'll put some wiring here and then some Marble brick jacketed wiring like that to here. And then I might need some wiring directly on the reactor, like that. And that should function pretty well for me. Then I can wrap some wire around here, like that. And maybe run it up here so that I have a lever which will control whether the reactor is running or not. So apply a redstone signal to a reactor and it stops it from running, which is a important thing. So redstone signal on, the reactor should not run. And we'll test this by placing our uranium cells inside our reactor about where we want them to be, which is here. One, two, three. Okay, so with the redstone signal applied, the reactor is not running. If I take its temperature, whole heat is zero. Okay, it's not produced any energy yet. Let's go outside real quick and confirm that by checking what the energy level is on this block. 97. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and turn on the nuclear reactor by flipping this lever. Ta-da! Oh boy, green glow. Problem. Uh, so you can check the uh, interface here. You can see the uranium cells are starting to take damage. And uh, we've got some hull heat going on. And if I jump into my white bag real quick, okay, uh, I should have my EU reader on here somewhere. There he is. And we're producing, as I predicted, 70 energy units per tick. Cool. But the whole heat is pretty high already. We've already got it up to 1645. A crazy amount of heat. 1757. Now it's starting to go down. Oh, good, because I turned it off. 
okay? So the uranium cells took some damage. We produced a lot of energy. And if we come over here, we should have a pretty well-stocked MFE. Uh, but remember, all the energy was produced and sent directly into the Tesla coils. So don't worry, the MFE will have uh, plenty of juice going forward pretty soon. I might even bump that guy up to an MFSU. We'll have to see. Uh, we'll need a MV transformer between him and the uh, rest of the guys, though, by the way. So anyway, our nuclear reactor is disabled, even though the green glow is on. Maybe that just means it's still hot. I don't know why it's still glowing green. It shouldn't be, but it's definitely off because we're not producing heat or any more energy. See? Zero EU per tick on average. Cool. So we've seen how to create energy, but what are all these other blocks for? Well, these other areas inside here are what the uh, cooling components that I told you about are for. So if you were to place some integrated heat dispersers in here, what they do is help distribute the heat between the hull of the reactor, which is what I'm measuring right now, and the internal components of the reactor. So I'm going to place some here, here, uh, on this side of this guy and this guy. And then uh, I'm going to grab some coolant cells as well and put this guy down here. Now the coolant cells, what they do is their job is basically to absorb heat. Notice that they're already taking damage because the integrated heat disperser is dispersing its heat that's on the reactor hull right now here and it's dispersing it to the coolant cells in here. So the coolant cells are already taking some of the heat off of the reactor just by placing them in there with the integrated heat dispersers, okay? And the integrated heat dispersers are gonna distribute the heat to all the uh, cells that are immediately in the vicinity of them. Uh, I think touching them is exactly what it has to do. So you can see now that um, the integrated heat dispersers here all are kind of touching a coolant cell and the coolant cells are all getting balanced out. So the integrated heat dispersers balance the heat between the coolant cells that they're touching. So this guy's touching these two. This one's touching these four. And these guys are touching here and here. And it also balances it out with the hull, which now should be pretty low on heat. Oh yeah, nice and low. Now when the hull heat drops to zero, the uh, coolant cells are gonna be able to start cooling off as well as the integrated heat dispersers, which also take damage. Um, so basically this is a heat level and the, uh, or I guess a coolant level, okay? The cooler it is, the fuller the bar is. And if it gets too hot, it, get, it does get destroyed. But uh, if it doesn't get destroyed, it will eventually cool off completely and you can see the damage bar is starting to disappear. So this thing completely cooled off. Now the uranium cell damage meter is basically telling you how much energy is left in the uranium cell before it's going to go and have problems. So let's turn this machine on now and see what happens. All right, see, everything's taking some heat. Very cool. Now if we check the level of this heat, we'll see it's still rising just a little bit. We don't want that to happen. Um, another way to prevent heat from rising is to surround the block with water. And I don't think it has to be water source blocks, I think it can just be water, period. So let's get this guy going. If I just put some water in here, like so. There we go. Nice. Pretty cool looking, huh? Not bad at all. And um, all the other blocks in here should help keep this thing cool. Like I said, I don't think it needs to be water source blocks, but I don't mind putting a few extra, you know, pieces of water around. Cool. Uh, now the water inside this room is going to help cool off the reactor even more. And there's some serious math behind this whole thing. So I'm not going to bore you guys with the math details because I don't fully understand it myself. But uh, there is some serious math, that's all you need to know, that'll uh, help you figure out how much heat and coolant and how long these things run for and all this other crazy stuff. But if I've built my reactor properly, it should not generate any heat at the moment. Um, let's see what happens. All right, it, I lied, it will generate a little bit of heat, but a very small amount, hopefully. So let's turn the lever uh, off again, which allows the reactor to run, and then start taking its temperature. Uh, note that it's going to very slowly rise up in heat. It should be pretty darn slow. Looking good. So far, yeah, see, look how long it's taken for the coolant cells to start taking damage there. So we're going to have a very small amount of heat, and it's going to take a while to really build up. Um, all the coolant cells are going to do their thing to help cool this thing off. Um, and the water in the room is really also going to help. Now this thing will build up heat, but remember I said it gets up to 10,000 before it explodes, all right? Well, the way this reactor is designed, it's considered a Mark II reactor. A Mark I reactor will never generate heat. It's got enough coolant cells and enough integrated heat dispersers such that it doesn't ever generate heat and will never explode. 
okay? But it doesn't typically produce a lot of um, energy because if I wanted more coolant in here, I'd have to start taking out uranium cells. Now, I didn't talk about exactly how much energy is created by uranium cells. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but basically, we'd have to take uranium cells out to put more cooling in. So we'd have less energy generation if we were to do that. Um, we've got here a Mark II reactor, which means it can run a full cycle. In other words, it'll completely drain the uranium cells uh, before it explodes. But if we were to immediately take the uranium cells out and replace them and start it running again before it had cooled off between cycles, it definitely could explode. So what we want to do is measure the heat temperature on this thing. Uh, once it completely burns out, it'll probably be pretty high. And then we'll uh, let it cool off all the way down to zero before it can run again. So that's going to be all right. I'm not worried about that too much. Um, how much energy is being created? Well, remember I said it's about 70 EU per tick. Well, 70 isn't divisible by 3, so how much energy is this thing creating, these uranium cells each? Well, these uranium cells will each create 10 EU per tick on their own. However, if they're touching another uranium cell, they react with each other and double the amount of energy that each of them creates and uh, will also double the amount of heat. If a uranium cell is touching two uranium cells, like this one is, it'll triple it. So this guy is touching two uranium cells, so he alone is producing 30 energy units per tick. This guy here is producing uh, 20 because it's only touching one other uranium cell. And this guy here is producing 20 because he's touching one other uranium. So 30 plus 20 plus 20 equals your 70. Okay, so basically the more uranium cells you put next to each other, the more energy you produce, but also the more heat you produce. They're producing a lot more heat per tick as well. So, uh, you know, we're starting to build up our hull heat, not a big deal. Let's go out here and see what's happening. Now, I forget if this thing will automatically shut off once it fully fills up the MFE. I don't know. Um... I know I've built auto shut off mechanisms before, but the geothermal generator automatically shuts itself off. I'm not sure if the nuclear reactor does or not. So let's let the MFE fill up, and then we'll consider if we want to uh, have an MFSU out here or what we want to do. All right, here we go. Um, we're at 585. This MFE is almost totally full. Uh, we're getting very close to that wrapping up point because we've already hit the half an hour mark and passed it. So I do want to finish up this little segment before I clip it, though. So let's see what's happening now over in this room. Uh, we shouldn't have energy flowing through this line anymore, right? Because it's full. So what's happening to the heat level on this guy? 391, 392, 393. So he is still running. So we're going to have to create an auto shutoff mechanism so that it doesn't continue running the uh, little MFE and the reactor. Hey, look, it stopped. It's not green anymore. Cool. So this will help cool it off. We'll let all the cooling happen and everything chill out. Next, I want to test the um, mob killing capacity of our Tesla coils once the system is fully charged with an MFE. My concern here is this MFE can really only output 128 energy units per tick, and it's got eight of these guys to fill up. And they all need about 10,000 EU. So it's 80,000 EU it has to pump out of the MFE um, at 128 energy units per tick. That doesn't seem right, but I think it says 30 seconds according to my calculator. Let me try that again. 80,000 divided by um, 128 energy units per tick should be 625 ticks divided by 20? 31? Huh. I don't know if that's right or not, but I guess we'll find out because I want to test this. Um, so it might be that it'll take 30 seconds to fully recharge all these guys. Wow, that would suck. But it'll only take 7 seconds, 7.8 to be exact, if I had an MFSU down there outputting 512 energy units per tick. I guess we'll have to figure it out. Um, anyway, uh, let's get some mobs in there. Yoink! close up the room and I'll be back in a minute once a bunch small. All right, waited about a minute or two and keep peeking in the room. It looks like we've got a lot. So let's turn on the lights and uh, oh boy, yeah, look at that, lots of bad guys. So let's go check the uh, energy level. It should be full, right? So I wanna real quick turn on the power and then uh, come over here and see how long it takes to recharge uh, and, and refill all the Tesla coils in there. Now it might not be a perfect test because we're probably gonna wind up having uh, you know, some mobs that don't die. But let's peek through the wall here. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're attacking me. High voltage, go! Oh, yeah, they're taking damage down there. Look at them all die. Oh, yeah, see, look, it's taking a while for the ones in the back to die because it's waiting for this to recharge. All right, so let's see how long it happens. 
Yeah, believe it or not, it did take a good almost 30 seconds to fully recharge it. Oh well. So, I think I'm gonna have to upgrade this guy to an MFSU. But, guess when I'm gonna do that? That's right, next episode. Good guess. You guys are smart. So anyway, this is Direwolf20 signing off on episode 69. Come back for 70 when I completely finish off this room. And then, uh, I can probably, uh, also, I already came up with a plan to, uh, automate the whole, uh, collection of items thing. So no longer am I gonna have to run in there with the void ring on. So cool. I have a really good idea, believe me. It's gonna be awesome. So, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll be back next time. Take it easy, everyone.